Hello lovely people, welcome to another episode of Book Chat, the regular but not monthly roundup of what I've been reading recently. I have quite a few books to talk about and I also have to leave the house soon, so I'm going to try and be as quick as possible and concise. Also, if you can hear my boyfriend in the shower, I apologise, but as I said, we have to leave. I'm going to start off with two books that I got out from the library, which I'm about to return to the library, hence the rushed recording video. Uh, we're going to kick off with a really good one, um, Dreams of Gods and Monsters by Lainey Taylor. This is the third and final book in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. I got this out from the library because in my time I recently recorded my book series I really need to finish video. So I was in the library and I spotted this and I was like, this is my moment, I can finally finish this series. And I have to say, why did I leave it so long? Um, I absolutely loved this, despite the fact that I was a little bit fuzzy on a couple of the details from earlier books because it has been a while since I read them, this was really really great. About halfway through I was like, I think this is going to be a four star book rather than a five star book because um, I've been really loving this really bigger picture political war between these angels and these chimera. Um, but then <laughs> sometimes I got a little annoyed halfway through because the romance between Karu and Akiva um, kept like, there were just a few moments where I was like, I get it, you guys want to be together but there is some other stuff going on so could we put pining on pause for just a moment? But then the more this went on, the more it just got better and better and better and by the time the conclusion to this happened I was like, star book because I just loved the conclusion so much I didn't see it coming I like I saw these threads developing but I was like how are you gonna reconcile all of these threads um, I will also say as well a lot of side characters really got to shine in this which I really enjoyed I think some of my favorite moments in this book was to do with side characters who were actually allowed to like grow and change and that sort of thing so cracking a slightly less enjoyable read, but one that I also got out from the library, is Are You My Mother? A comic drama by Alison Bechdel. Obviously, she's a big name. I know of her. Um, Fun Home, is that it? Um, I've listened to the musical, and it made me want to cry at work. So I was like, oh, let's give this a try. Um, whereas Fun Home is all about um, Alison's father, this one is looking at her mother. Um, my struggle with this was, I think... I went into this expecting something that was looking at this relationship with her mother, but I think due to the very complex and complicated relationship they have, there is a disconnect because it kind of feels like there's a disconnect between them. So what I ended up feeling is that I felt like I just couldn't connect to this. A lot of this was actually about like um, psychoanalysis and um, Virginia Woolf actually was quite a bit in this. And there was just a lot more of this was looking at just psychoanalysis as a topic and Alison trying to apply those things to herself and stuff like this rather than necessarily exploring this relationship with her mother. And I understand that maybe that's just what happens when you try and write a book about an extremely complicated and difficult relationship you have with someone that there is a disconnect in. I don't know. But suffice to say, I couldn't enjoy this very much. I found it interesting and a uh, interesting way of doing a graphic novel, I just also really struggled to connect with it, so I didn't give it a very high rating, because I just, there was a disconnect between me and the book. After that are two books which I have had to read for potentially like 15 to 20 years. Um, this is The Weird Stone of Brisingerman and The Moon of Gumreis by Alan Garner. Um, essentially I've got like boxes of books that are my to read list, my to read pile, because they don't go in the bookshelves until they're read. That's my system. And these have been there since I was, I think I read these when I was a kid, but I couldn't remember them, so I put them back in the box when I moved so that I would read them again and see if I wanted to keep them. And then I realised that I think they belong to my dad's friends because they've got their names at the front, and I think I've accidentally had their books for so long and I feel really bad about it, so I was like, I have to read these immediately and give them back and apologise. Um, these are, if you're familiar with Alan Garner, Alan Garner does a lot of like children's fantasy. I read The Owl Service by him and I really loved it. That was like playing on Welsh mythology. This had another thread of mythology running through it. So um, Susan and uh, Carl, I want to say Carl, <laughs> I've forgotten his name, Colin. Susan and Colin um, essentially have to stay with their mum's like nurse and her husband in um, this like rural countryside in like Cheshire. Um, for about six months and 
while they're there and they are exploring the surrounding nature and stuff, they stumble upon um, there is more going on beneath the surface. They meet this guy. Um, they meet this like wizard. There are these like dark foes. Uh, the stuff like they become embroiled in this conflict that's been going on for a long time. That's what I will say. Um, these are the first two books in what is now a trilogy, but Alan Garner took a break between finishing The Moon of Gomorrah, like a ten year or so break, before he wrote the final book. Um, these were thoroughly enjoyable children's fantasy. I will say, uh, one thing I really loved about this was the mix of mythologies. So whereas the Owl Service was like strictly Welsh mythology, this had a real mix. There's definite elements of like Norse mythology going on, especially in some of the terms we're using and um, the types of creatures that are being featured. But there was also, there was some Irish mythology, and I'm sure there were other types of mythology that I'm just not familiar with. So I really liked this weaving mythology into your fantasy world. I thought that was very great. Um, there were some really great ideas going on here. I think the bit where it's slightly lacking for me is I felt the characterization of the two children was a bit lacking, especially in the first book. In the first book, they felt very um, characterless, vessels through which we are experiencing this story, whereas in this one both of them get moments where like portions of the text we are like following them and they got to develop a little bit more in this one I feel. The plot itself, I think the strength of the plot does come from these really interesting concepts and ideas for character um, creatures and stuff. I think the plot was a little children's fantasy formulaic in many ways but it was still really enjoyable so I think this is like a solidly decent kids series potentially not the best Alan Garner it's been a very long time since I read Elador so I'd have to do a reread of that to be able to compare them but thoroughly enjoyable I would like to finish the series but it's not one of my priority series to finish so I'm gonna be maybe I'll look in the library <laughs> do a repeat of what I've just done and finish them off finally Okay, for the final section of the video, we're moving on to some non-fiction, starting with um, Julian of Norwich, Revelations of Divine Love. Uh, my boyfriend lent this to me, my boyfriend is a Quaker, and he read this book and he really connected with it because Julian of Norwich was a um, medieval, I want to say like abbess or nun, I don't really know the correct terminology. She essentially, um, while very, very deeply ill and nearly dying ill, um, re received like visions um, I can't remember, like, revelations is what you call them, but, um, and this, this is essentially her describing what she saw, describing what she drew out of it, blah, 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 blah. Um, the thing my boyfriend really liked about this is Julian sort of keeps returning to this idea of God is love, and all of this, um, tr like, she has a whole preoccupation with the idea of, like, she really finds it hard to reconcile, like, concept of sin with like God and love and stuff like this so she like goes through that a little bit. Essentially I read this because um, whilst I myself am not religious I have a deep respect for the fact that my boyfriend is and anything I can do to understand that better and stuff like that I'm always up for doing so I read this to sort of get a sense of what it is about this that he connected with and I can definitely see how that sort of idea of God as love and that sort of thing is something that he's connected with. I personally as someone who is not a Christian, found it not the most engaging just because she repeats herself quite a lot, which I think is this nature of going through these visions and not just like telling you about them, but like what do you draw out of them? There was just quite a lot of repetition of certain messages and stuff like this, which I assume is to be like, this is legit, this is blah, like she spent her life in contemplation of God and stuff like that. Like I kind of get why it would be in this form. It's just after a while I was like, I have got it, Julian. Okay, can we move on? <laughs> but that's just me. At the same time, I'm glad I read it. I'm glad I have a little bit more of an understanding of it. Uh, I will be giving it back. Um, another book my boyfriend lent me is Owain Glendore, Prince of Wales by R. R. Davies. This is a short little potted history all about Owain Glendore. In the very late 1300s, early 1400s, Owen Glendore announced himself as um, Prince of Wales and led a revolt against King Henry and um, rallied quite a lot of um, the Welsh people to his aid and stuff like this and it was quite a formidable rebellion at one point. Um, this was super interesting. If you are in any way interested in Owen Glendore, um, this is a really great introduction to him. Um, I was passingly familiar, so there was a lot of this that I did know, but it was very interesting to 
get more depth. I particularly liked Singh's looking at like, we analyse a couple of things like the papal letter, the letter he sent to the Pope and stuff like this as to what does this tell us about what Glyndor planned for his Kingdom of Wales to be? How, what form would that take? both in like religion and social structure and stuff like this. Um, I also enjoyed looking at the ways, the atmosphere of the time that allowed him to have such a successful rebellion. For example, King Henry's reign, um, I think it's Henry II, I'm having a brain blank. Um, but it, So Henry's reign was one that there were a number of other things going on at the time which Glendor was able to exploit, like he had an alliance with the Percys and stuff like this. Like, all of these things which allowed Glyndora to have a more successful rebellion than maybe if Henry hadn't been preoccupied with other things going on. Stuff like that. This like exploration of like what is the wider context of this and then looking in closely and being like, okay, and what from these things can we tell about how he intended his reign to be? Um, it was just super duper interesting and it had uh, great resources for if you want to go off and do more reading. So I think this was a really cracking little intro book final book I'm going to talk about was one book that I got given for Christmas, and that is Deeds Not Words, The Story of Women's Rights Then and Now by Helen Pankhurst. Um, this is essentially Helen Pankhurst um, has split the book into a certain number of topics like politics, culture, violence, stuff like this, and is looking back at the suffragettes 100 years ago and then now, and sort of doing a little summary of like what has happened in the time in between, where are we now, like compared to where we were. And at the end of each chapter, she gives like a little rating out of five as to like how much progress have we made. Um, this was interesting, although potentially slightly limiting. I think the concept of this as a book is such that like you can very much only do what you, what you can do. So, like. Politics. I particularly enjoyed the first chapter on politics because I felt like it was quite thorough. It looked at it from many different party angles and um, there was a lot there that I didn't know about. Some of the other chapters, like culture, discussed a lot of topics that I am quite familiar with within feminist discourse already. So in those sorts of chapters, I found them a little less interesting because we were summarising arguments that I'm already familiar with, but because of the nature of the book, they had to be quite quick little summaries, and they are things which I think could have been... There were certain things which could have had more nuance. There are certain things which I would have liked to have read about in a bit more context, like complexity, but the very nature of the summation, like, nature of this book means that that's not possible because, like, we'd be here forever. So, definitely achieves what it set out to do, which is to be a little summary. I think there is a slight limitation in what that will give, like, this is quite, if you are someone who reads a lot of feminist discourse and is quite familiar with feminist literature and stuff, there will be a lot in here that you will already know. The benefit of reading this is that it gives you a lot of studies and facts and figures and names and dates and stuff to back up things which you are potentially familiar with the concept of. That was definitely something which was good. There are things which, although the discussion that we're having like around the themes, I'm familiar with the actual like, and it is this piece of legislation that led to this or whatever, didn't know about. So that was good. A definitely like a solidly decent book if you are a person who engages or maybe it's just not my particular type of feminist discourse, I don't know. I just felt like there were big portions of this book that I was like, okay, could we have some more? Let's take this to the next step, or you know, whatever. That's it from me. I hope you have a really lovely week, and I will see you next time for something different.